In this video, we'll be discussing about the lipolysis, which in simple terms means the breakdown of triglycerides stored in the adipose tissue. Here we see triglycerides are hydrolyzed into glycerol and fatty acids. It must be noted that when we have low levels of glucose in our blood, lipolysis is driven or when we have low levels of insulin. Now let's first see what enzymes drives the lipolysis pathway. First we have the ATGL enzyme, that's adipose triglyceride lipase. It catalyzes hydrolysis of triacylglycerol into diacylglycerol. Second enzyme is the HSL enzyme, which is the hormone sensitive to lipase. It catalyzes hydrolysis of diacylglycerol into monoacylglycerol. Then we have the third enzyme, which is monoacylglycerol lipase. It catalyzes the hydrolysis of monoacylglycerol into glycerol. And then there is one important protein that's pyrilipin 1A protein, which regulates the lipolysis pathway. Now let's start the pathway. Here we see we have the adipocyte cell having beta adrenergic receptor, which is having inactive trimeric G protein bound as alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. And this G protein is having GDP bound as shown in the diagram. And on the right, we have the adenylyl cyclase protein. To initiate or induce the pathway, we must have low levels of glucose, which triggers the release of glycogon, or this pathway is induced or initiated by high epinephrine levels and low insulin levels in the blood. So when we have low levels of insulin, the epinephrine comes in and binds with the GPCR protein as shown in the animation. And then upon binding, we have the transformational change in the GPCR domain, with which the GDP bound with the G-alpha protein is replaced by GTP, as shown in the animation. And this process is done by GEF, that's gonosine nucleotide exchange factor. So the binding of GTP with G-alpha subunit drives the activation of G-protein. And this subunit, that's G-alpha, dissociates from rest of G-protein, as shown in the animation. Then from here, it leaves and binds with the adenylyl cyclase as shown in the animation. Upon binding, the adenylyl cyclase is activated, which mediates the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP or simply CAMP. And these cyclic AMP molecules or simply CAMP molecules then attaches with the inactive protein kinase A to its regulatory subunits and renders the catalytic subunits of PKA active. So we have the fully activated PKA protein now. Let's keep it here. On the other hand, we have the lipid droplet in the adipocyte as shown in the diagram. It's having perilipin protein on the surface and CGI protein is bound to the perilipin as shown in the diagram. Both proteins are in inactive state still. On the left, we have the inactive ATGL enzyme and on the bottom, we are having the MGL enzyme as shown in the diagram. And within the cytoplasm of adipocyte, we are having the inactive HSL enzyme. Now let's get back to the active PKA protein, which was activated by CAMP mediated pathway. The active PKA protein acts on HSL protein and phosphorylates it. And this phosphorylated HSL protein is moved to the surface of lipid droplet as shown in the animation. And in the meantime, active PKA also phosphorylates the perilipin 1A protein on the surface of lipid droplet, as shown in the diagram. So now we have phosphorylated perilipin protein also. This phosphorylated perilipin protein detaches from the CGI protein and associates itself with the HSL protein as shown in the animation. And on the other hand, the detached CGI protein leaves off and associates itself with ATGL enzyme and renders it active. So up to now, we have successfully activated the two important enzymes for lipolysis. First is the HSL protein, which is associated with the perilipin, and second is the ATGL protein. Now from here, the active ATGL converts triacylglycerols to diacylglycerols. Then active HSL and perilipin protein acts on this diacylglycerol and converts it into monoacylglycerol. Furthermore, this monoacylglycerol is acted upon by MGL enzyme and converts it into glycerol as shown in the diagram. And within the adipocyte, these diacyl or monoacylglycerols can be converted into free fatty acids through hydrolysis also. 
so diacyl glycerol or monoacyl glycerol are either converted into glycerol or fatty acids through hydrolysis. So this concludes our lipolysis pathway. Then after that we have the mobilization part which we are going to see in the next part of the video. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give the thumbs up. Do consider support my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.